Hello there, Janine Hill here with Podcasts for the Soul, Heartfelt Living. Welcome to 2022. We have the absolute pleasure of listening and chatting with Lisa Jones, evolutionary astrologer. Lisa was a, a wonderful guest we had on Heartfelt Living Podcast for the Soul last year. And uh, have her back and we're going to explore 2022 what's in store how we can rise to embrace all that 22 is going to bring so lisa welcome it is great to have you back it is great to be back thank you i you know, I feel very honoured, which is what I think I said last time. I still feel honoured. It's really lovely to be able to share with you and share with everyone who's listening some uh, real positive perspective. Awesome. Take it away. Mm. Let us know what's going to be happening 2022, oh, astrologically wow. speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I would like to start by saying one thing, which is about every day week month and breath that we take mm. which is I am a great believer as I feel after all the lovely discussions that you and I have had that you are too in that everything is you know predestined in relation to what our soul asks for and the contract that we sign up for so I guess you know having had my fair share of challenging life periods of which I'm grateful for every single one of them. I guess I just want to say to anyone that might be going through a challenging period, a rite of passage, a rebirthing, a crossroads, a transition, of which I think life is actually one great big transition, but we go through many transitions within the one. I, You know, if you are experiencing anything like that, try and know that it is all part of your grand plan that you have set up with the universe and that source energy, soul energy, source energy, whatever, however you work with that, has it already tracked out for you. And, and you know, we need to go through some of these more challenging times that help to create this authentic, autonomous version of ourselves, the best possible version. And I really, really, really believe that we are all becoming the best versions of ourselves throughout our whole life. And that means that there are periods where we fall down and we pick ourselves up and we dust ourselves off or we retreat or we explore or we do whatever we're doing. And that's all part of this source energy that knows and when we're ready for whatever the next piece of the chapter, you know, the new chapter, the old chapter, the, the writing, the end of one story, the beginning of another, source energy knows. And, of course, we have free will. And when we're choosing to work with source energy, or I can say it in another way, becoming more aware, becoming more conscious, we hear the gifts from the gods, which then helps us to be walking down the path that is part of the source energy design divine plan i hope that's not too you know that's i really believe that for all of us and i have seen it in every moment of my life with myself with my family with my friends with my clients and it's not always easy, particularly after the last couple of years, mm. to hold that sense of belief. But mm. I think it's a part of what this year is going to offer us to come back to that. Wow. Lisa, that is such an overwhelmingly beautiful introduction. And, mm. you know, if I can say to the gorgeous listeners, um, that's something that I have particularly heard a lot in the last 18 months in particular, and there seems mm -hmm. to be this coined phrase of you were born for this time. You came mm -hmm. for these moments. And sometimes we go, 
Well, that's just a load of crap because it's just really hard going, the struggle, you know, and then there can be the other moments like you were sharing, you know, the up and the down. Uh, and then there can be the other moments when you really embrace on a soul and heartfelt level and you have those and they're quiet moments. Yeah. That mm, can sometimes take yeah, you by surprise yeah. with that go. Yeah. You, you know, you're here for this time and you've got what it takes. It's a case of digging deep and I think just you know the last couple of years not just on a personal level or a national level but on a global level every yeah. single human being on this planet has no doubt had those moments and yeah. they really are the making of us if we so I choose are. if we so choose and 2022 seems to be a bit more of the perhaps my understanding from what I've observed astrologically it's a bit more showtime a bit more out there mm. would, would you would you it's a nice way to say it would you agree with that yes Lisa? absolutely I do yeah. I think it really that's the, I love that you know I think about Leo when you say that but yeah it is time funny that we, we've done a lot you know yeah, funny that, isn't it? Um, that's a lovely phrase, showtime, because, you know, when it is showtime, it comes to the point where all the work we have been doing mm. is ready to be uh, expressed and shown and taken out into the world, mm. as well as inward, of course. But it is time to put the work into practice. Yeah. You know, yeah. To, yeah, and it is, you know, of course, we can be talking personally. Mm. We talk society, we talk collectively, globally as a, you know, we all, you know, and I think, again, this came up last time. We actually do all live on this planet together. Yeah. And it's very easy to lose sight of that. You know, it's not, of course, our world, our soul, our journey is, is incredibly important, but we are all part of something greater. And that's important to remember, I think. Mm. So yeah, I do totally agree. So tell us, let's <clears> get <throat> let's get the ball rolling. What uh, yep. what have you got okay. to share with us about twenty twenty two? Well, I would like to like I I would like to be able to come back throughout the year because there's so much happening. Mm. You know. To just sort of blurt all of that out can be a little uh, overwhelming. And, of course, we know that each thing we're going to talk about is going to be um, impacting us all on many different levels. But i just give a little bit of a highlights of a few of the things that are going on and then maybe we can come back to one of them and, and just dive into that one a little bit more. Right. Um, so certainly since... The beginning of the year, there's been a number of uh, shifts and changes already, and we're not actually at the end of the first month yet. So, you know, one of those is that the nodal axis, which we're going to come back and talk about today, has shifted signs. So that's one thing, which, as I said, we're going to talk about today, so I'll, I'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is an incredibly important mm. shift of energy, big time. Jupiter has re-entered Pisces. <clears throat> it was in Pisces uh, last year, and then it went back into Aquarius, retrograde, of course, and then it went direct again, still in Aquarius, and then it re-entered Pisces, where it will stay until the 11th of May. Mm -hmm. And on the 11th of May, it will enter Aries. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. And before it reaches Aries, it is going to conjunct Neptune. Mm. So we're going to have a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces. And that happens every 166 years. Wow. Can you explain to the listeners, Lisa, in 
a little bit of detail. Yes. What Jupiter, Neptune, what what being in Pisces, keywords, yeah. what, what that actually sure. means. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, before I do, I just want to add one little tiny piece. Because of, you know, life is full of cycles and patterns, which is, of course, why astrology is the most beautiful representation and symbology of life because it is all about cycles and patterns yes. and images and metaphors. Um, and every 166 years, you know, Jupiter and Neptune come together more than every 166 years, but not in Pisces. And at the same time as Jupiter and Neptune, one a social planet, one an outer planet, which I will go into, as you just were saying, come together. Uranus is always in Taurus ah. because Uranus has a maybe four-year cycle and that aligns with the 166-year cycle. So we're always going to have that Uranus in Taurus when we have Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces. So just to answer in brief that question, Jupiter and Neptune are, um, all right, so first of all, let's just do a few little simple basics. Jupiter is the old traditional ruler of Pisces. So yes. before Neptune was discovered in, I think, 1846, I think that's when it was. Sorry, I do know that, but sometimes those numbers escape my mind. But anyway, when Neptune was discovered, Neptune was allocated the rulership of Pisces. But up until that point, Jupiter was the ruler. So in some way, but it is still considered to be the co-ruler. So we have the modern ruler and the co-ruler of Pisces coming together in Pisces. So mm -hmm. it's like having a triple chocolate three scoop ice cream with chocolate. <laughs> like it's, it's very potent and strong and intense. And it's... Uh, consolidating these two energies so jupiter the natural ruler of sagittarius neptune the natural ruler of pisces but both co-rulers are coming together so let's just throw a, because this is huge it, we, and in fact it's something i'd probably like to come back to because it's in april that we have this neptune venus conjunction in pisces on i think the at 23 degrees we are going out of pisces which, of course, for anyone listening who may or may not be familiar with their chart, anyone that has anything in Pisces, anything at, at 23 degrees, anything in mutable signs is going to particularly feel this energy, but we're certainly none of us are immune to it. And what is because the it's energy? going to be happening somewhere. So mm -hmm. the energy is, so Jupiter is Zeus. And mm. Neptune is the god of the sea. So, you know, Jupiter is very much, you know, he was a shapeshifter. He is a very large entity. It's the largest planet in the solar system. So this energy is about many things, but just to keep it short for now, one of the focuses is the development of, well, faith. You know, so faith and vision and opportunity and expansion. They would be four probably primary words we could begin with when we talk about Jupiter. So Jupiter will offer us opportunities to create visions that support us to expand in a new light. And Neptune, which is an outer planet, so we're talking social planet, how do I expand out into society? Then we're talking outer planet. Outer planets connect us to the unconscious realm. So they are deeply seated within us. You know, they're, they're the big guns. They're the shape shifters. So Neptune is about inspiration. It's about taking something to a whole nother level. It's about unconditional love. Mm. It's about also about vision. It's about the ideal. It's about elevation 
and connection to the collective consciousness. It's about the divine and it's, it's about, you know, infinite expansion because Neptune is about being formless, but it's also about surrendering mm. and very much also about faith, you know, and it can, and I, I didn't talk really about the shadow side of Jupiter, but just to say we can, and a word I'm hearing a lot lately from people, it can overwhelm us. Mm -hmm. You know, Neptune is a vast ocean. And I guess if we were to be just in a vast ocean, there would be times that we would get tired and overwhelmed from trying to tread water. So Neptune is, you know, engulfs us. So we can feel lost and we can feel disillusioned which is of course all part of the process because there's that lovely phrase about you know to be lost enables us to be found so neptune is about completion as well so you know trusting you know so we so there's a, a number of words here that are similar you know jupiter is about finding a new faith in ourselves so we have this jupiterian energy of confidence and opportunity coming together with this energy which is about faith and inspiration and new vision through the lens motivations and tastes of Pisces and Pisces you know again is, is a vast archetype you know it is the poet it is the dreamer it is the illusionist mm. it is um, the artist it can also be the addict, the victim. And I'm sure we, you know, the um, in the shadow, it can be very much um, about not seeing things clearly. Mm -hmm. But the higher side of Pisces is about, you know, creating our our vision forward and what and, and developing a stronger sense of faith in what we cannot see. I trust and I know it's there and I am going to believe and connect into the, the universal divinity of my whole existence, which, you know, it, it is about spirituality and building on that. So we, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm not rushing through this, but I'm aware I want to talk about something else as well. And this synodic or this cycle of Jupiter Neptune, Pisces, 166 years since it happened last time. Now we're going to have it in April. And I, I really feel it's very positive, you know, because right now Jupiter is in Pisces. It's going to catch up to Neptune, hence this conjunction of energies that I'm talking about. And when we have two planets coming together, you know, they form, they become allies. Mm. And allies want to work together. Mm -hmm. um, so we have this incredible, powerful unity of trust and faith and new vision. And also the ability to go and surrender. Yes. You know, in a greater form. Yes. And so I feel that this is going to be really good for us all personally, as well as collectively. And, yes, we have to go through this process of really saying, you know, I, I, whatever it is that you do on your daily, weekly, ritualistic lie in your life to, to tap into this energy. So, you know, this is one saying it's, it's, there's a lot to explore. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel that, that it's a very, very, very important transition, which will then lead us into Jupiter in Aries, which is, perhaps something that we can pick up in a few months' time and talk about this cycle and the entry of Jupiter into Aries and what that might mean because, of course, Pisces is the last sign, Aries is the first sign. Mm -hmm. So it is really a completion of this Jupiter cycle, which is 12 years. Right, 12 years ago Jupiter was in Pisces. It's a 12-year cycle. So we're coming into the end of something and preparing for the beginning of something else in this energy. So I think that could be something that would be great to focus on talking about. Mm, everything that um, you've, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every, everything that you've shared 
leads me to a particular quote um, I remember hearing on and off over the years, which goes something like, faith is the bird that feels the light when the dawn is still dark. Oh, that's beautiful. And looking at, you know, Jupiter being the social planet and Neptune being the transpersonal, I'm, I'm also led to reflect upon the last two years and something that I've really noticed on a societal level, um, you know, you're bringing it back down, societal, community, family, the individual, is most people have been brought to their knees. And what I've mm, witnessed, what I've absolutely. witnessed on all of those levels is that being brought to the knees, people are looking for something deeper within themselves, something without. So I'm I'm really mindful that there's been a, a reconnection with uh, one's faith and whether faith is of a religious um, in a religious sense or faith from a spiritual perspective or you know again this it is going to be okay that optimism which is very Piscean and that Piscean energy does have that tendency to actually be able to bounce back pretty quickly um, mm -hmm. because there is that that foundational pull around knowing that even though things are unseen at the moment, there is going to be transformation. And I know transformation is more a Plutonian and Scorpio concept, but mm. transformation at a, at a level that is about really embracing that oneness that you were sharing mm. and talking about with that Neptunian energy. So, um, it gives me great uh, reassurance and, in, and I feel inspired hearing about the conjunction um, of these two almighty planets mm. because that just confirms the faith that I, I really feel that the listeners are so eager to embrace uh, and I, I feel that this is taking it that step deeper into less of the noise out there and more of the silence in here. Mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice way to say it. And, you know, there's a lot of other areas to explore with that, so I think that would be a great one in a few months to look mm. at even, you know, further into that and into that what what this cycle is, is about. Beautiful. <clears throat> so well, maybe we'll a little bit before yeah. that conjunction. And but, we'll definitely no, get you back to talk about that, yeah. So that's that you know that's I say that's one thing of course that's a lot of things Huge. in one but mm. um, and we also later this year have you know at Uranus has been transiting through Taurus oh actually before I say that I just want to say for anybody they can obviously contact you Janine but that Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces apart from the collective healing it will mm. be it's also going to offer us personal healing. So, you know, if anybody is wondering, well, where is that? Where, how can I embrace that, you know, in betterment of my evolutionary potential? You know, you would obviously be able to look at that and tell people and, and give them some insight because mm. I only recognised recently <laughs> that um, that, conjunction is in almost exact square to my son so I thought ah, oh, that's interesting that is Sometimes interesting you, over, you know so it's mm. so for each of us it's going to be offering something as we're moving along our path so I just mm. wanted to add that so Uranus Uranus is presently at how many degrees 10 degrees of Taurus so for everybody that um fixed energy Taurus energy for anybody that has Uranus travelling through Taurus, they're going to have either had, will have, or are, are going to have over the next few years a Uranus-Taurus conjunction, but it's a lot more than that. So Uranus in Taurus is going to meet the North Node and Mars later this year, I think in August. Um, and that is also another very big joining of 
energies collectively and personally. So that is another thing that I think would be great to talk about. Yes. Um, I won't go into that now, but that's certainly, um, you know, we have retrograde, we still have Chiron and Aries, which would be a great thing to talk about because that Chiron is making a number of aspects um, to the other planets. So I I feel what I would like to do now is just come back because I'm not sure of how we're going for time and I know we don't want to make this that it goes too far. Um, but I'd like to just talk for a minute about the nodal shift of energy, which is what I started with. Absolutely. Um, so what has occurred is... The south node on the 18th or 19th, depending on the hemisphere or where you are, but let's say on the 18th, uh, it moved from the sign of Sagittarius into the sign of Scorpio, which of course means that the north node has moved from Gemini into Taurus. So Sagittarius and Gemini have been the gatekeepers of the nodal axis for the past 18 months. 18 and a half months. And now the transiting nodes have shifted into the next polarity, which is, as I said, Scorpio Taurus, Scorpio South Node, Taurus North Node. And incredibly so different does, energies. <laughs> incredibly different energies. Yeah. You know, so what does that mean in brief? Mm. <clears throat> so, first of all, I guess the thing that strikes me first is we've moved from air and fire into earth and water. So we've moved from yang to yin. And as Janine just said, very, very different energy. So, um, you know, Gemini and Sagittarius is an axis that is all about knowledge and understanding and information and, you know, detail and big picture and, you know, and belly wisdom and rational thought and so on and so on. Um, sociability, stimulation, vision. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Which brings me to the next major change, which is the rulers. So not mm -hmm. only do we go from fire and air to earth and water, but we go from a shift of rulership from Mercury and Jupiter to Pluto and Venus. Again, very different uh, deities or very different gods. You know, Mercury is the messenger. Quick witted, silver tongued, light footed. <clears throat> the only god that was able to go from the heavens to the earth to the underworld. Jupiter, as we were just talking about, you know. The, the shapeshifter, the God that's about faith and opportunity and confidence and seeing a bigger picture. Now we move into this Venus-Pluto territory and, you know, so now we're talking about Aphrodite and the God of the underworld. Um, to, and, of course, in the, in the whole time that we have these nodes in this axis, and this axis, you know, if we talk Gemini Sag as knowledge, this is now the axis of values, what I call the axis of values. So <clears throat> these two energies are really bringing us back down to earth might be a way of uh, just briefly saying it. Um, so let's just start by just compare. Let's just look at what is Scorpio and Taurus about. So Scorpio is about, and again, I'm just going to throw a few keywords out. So Scorpio is, I remember someone saying to me many years ago, another astrologer who's written a number of books, and he said to me, if I was to use two words when we're talking about Scorpio, Pluto energy, I would say truth matters. Oh, nice. And was, they were two words that I didn't ever forget because I thought they were so, that, that was so spot on. Um, so truth is definitely a scorpionic energy. Um, trust, a scorpionic energy. Power is also very related to this expression. Mm. Now, I say the word power, whether we talk about 
con power and control, or whether we're talking about being disempowered, or whether we're talking about self empowerment. It's all connected. So, um, privacy, intimacy, um, secrets, um, control, things, control, surveillance, things that are hidden. Yes, surveillance. You know, yep. one of yeah, one of the archetypes for Scorpio is the detective. Mm -hmm. Um, and detectives are about getting to the bottom of everything, but they're not going to give anything away. <laughs> and that's so beautifully scorpionic, you know. And also, you know, we're talking about water. So this is about feeling, emotion, mm. depths, ripples, undercurrents. Fluidity. Um, you know, fluidity, mm. exactly. Are the waters murky or clear? You know, it's... It's a, it, it, I guess one of the first things I learned about Scorpio energy is that it's about deep emotional connection. It's a, it's this energy wants to definitely look you straight in the eye into your soul and say, I want to connect with you. Are you up for it? It wants to embrace the dark and the light. Mm. So, you know, this is a very intense, passionate energy, which is about everything. Or nothing. So this is part of this shift. This is what we're, we've just moved into. I'll come back to the south node and its meaning in a minute. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the other side of the polarity, of course, is Taurus. Oh, I will say one other thing. Scorpio and Taurus, you know, are about where we where we join unions with another person, but also through. Um, resources and finances yes um and then of course when we we flip into the taurian side of things um taurus is about self-reliance self-resources um self-funded but it's it's much more than that of course taurus is the bull so when we think about the image of the bull this is a very strong, stable creature that takes its time, slows down, stabilises, steadies itself, moves at its own pace in the direction it chooses when it's ready. <laughs> um, but it's certainly a very strong, stable energy and it is about Mother Earth. It is about everything Mother Earth offers us. It's about abundance in a different form to Jupiter. It's about how productive are we able to be? How resourceful are we able to be? How are we able to use those resources and consolidate? But it's also very much about simplicity and coming back to nature and coming back to the things that are important to us. You know, it's ruled by Venus. So our value systems are going to be a big part of what's being reset. Mm. Um, and ultimately, it's about peace. Sitting at the top of the mountain, surveying the beauty and just taking that breath out. You know, how do we recreate a new sense of peace? And we're talking earth, and earth is, of course, about practicality. It's about organisation, but it's also very much about security, feeling safe. So, you know, we have this big shift of the nodes. Now, the south node, when we're talking about transiting south node, I do feel as it, it of course, links into the, the natal nodes, but it is a little different in the way that we're going to talk about it. The south node may be talked about as where we feel stuck. Now, this can be where do we feel stuck collectively or where do we feel stuck personally? Um, it can be referred to as where are we asking to let go of something? What are we asking to release? Um, what karmic patterns and I say karmic I'm always mindful about using that word because everything in the chart is karmic but what patterns are re-emerging for us to really address in relation to scorpionic energy um, 
collectively so it is speaking. A, mm, collectively mm. speaking, right? yeah, in relation to you know all of the things and more. I'm sure you know around you know trust. You know how do we collectively regain our trust in? I'm going to say higher powers. I know no one can see me, but I'm saying you know higher powers. Um, in you know, how do we, you know, I just, a couple of other scorpionic words that just jumped out is penetrating and probing. And it's important that we don't just accept things, but we also, need, you know, because I'm sure there's already things coming out of the darkness, making themselves known and present. And I'm sure that's going to be a continuing theme. Yeah. So. And I mean, also this, my, my understanding, Lisa, too, is, with scorpionic energies how do we come back how do we overcome betrayals betrayals of you know abuses of power abuses of control excessive surveillance how do we how do we as a collective come back from that when you talked about karmic i mean it doesn't just necessarily mean you know collective in the last few years we could be talking collective generations Absolutely. Power bases, control bases, you know, abuses, all of that, all of that darker energy, which Scorpio is so, so attuned to and aligned to being able to penetrate beneath the surface. And, you know, it's like anything. It's like a lotus flower um, is able to bloom because it's, it's coming out of the mud and the muck. And that's, mm. that's this, how do we come out of this muck? You know, and I think I love the, the fact that then we've got the, the Taurus North Node collectively, which is, you know, in a very simplified sense, we come out of the muck step by step. Mm. We keep yeah. taking the steps simply, easily, and just heading in a direction um, that is, is really about, moving towards our value as a individual and as a, a collective and you know I mean Taurus being ruled by Venus I it always brings me back to the heartfelt energy you know yeah. and that harmony and that peace and we find that peace and harmony yeah. when we start within the heart so the heart in my you know how do we heal this collective heart yes yes and we do that, I feel, by individually working on ourselves. Yeah. Because that creates the collective. Yeah. And through, you know, what you were just saying around simplifying and coming back to our values and really being true to ourselves. Yes. Um, because the North Node in Taurus is going to ask us to, you know, the North Node opposed to this releasing karmic addressing that we're doing at the south node the the transiting north node is asking is is giving us a hand up or a, a step up you know it's putting its hand out and saying come over here we need you to take this direction spend some time over here mm. um, in relation to your healing in relation to finding solutions mm -hmm. and so you know i mean you don't have to be einstein really to say the whole world needs to get you know, to move forward to become more productive and organic again. I mean, that's goes without saying, but certainly if we if we all come back to our simple truths and values, and, and the thing with these two rulers is that the whole time these nodes, which is going to be for about 19 months, are in these signs of Taurus and Scorpio, the south node will be ruled by Pluto and Capricorn for the whole <laughs> entire time. Oh boy. Which did not happen, which did not happen in the Gemini Sag period of 18 months because um, Mercury went through every single sign mm. in the in, in the time. In fact, more than every single sign, it went through a few twice. And it went retrograde. You know, Mercury retrograde periods is another topic again. But it had a lot of shifts and changes. This scorpionic node has the power and penetration to go 
into the underworld, mm -hmm. you know, to descend, to go into the darkness and really come up with some authentic truths. Um, and the north node, of course, is going to be ruled by Venus. And as much as Venus is, is obviously going to shift, not as much as Mercury will. So, so they're even just in those rulerships, there's a stabilizing. And, you know, even if you just think about Pluto and Venus, you know, those two autonomous gods, you know, are asking us to re empower ourselves through, through love and through um, authenticity and values and relating. You know, Venus is a planet of relating. Mm. She is about relationships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are all, you know, this combination uh, is definitely, and, of course, Pluto is at 26 degrees of Capricorn today. Venus is at 11 degrees of Capricorn retrograde. So, you know, even watching out for these retrograde period, you know, like once Venus goes direct, that's going to bring another layer into this north node energy. Yes. Yes. So, and of course, where is it happening in your chart, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that we said before. And, mm. you know, even simple things, you know, like I'm not saying this is going to, you know, solve the world's problems, but, and, and I, I look at it as the world's evolution because I don't like the word problems. Uh, it's the it's humanity and what we're going through at the moment. But even things like taking off your shoes every morning, every afternoon, every lunchtime and going out and getting the grass under your feet, connecting to Mother Earth, you know, going out and being in nature, sitting under a tree. I read a lovely thing recently about it was actually a deck of cards that I've got called the Inner Soul Guidance Oracle, beautiful cards that were gifted to me from a, a lovely lady that I know and there is a card in there called the tree and it's really beautiful but it actually reminds me of this energy because it's about going out into nature sitting under the tree and sharing with the tree all your concerns all your worries allowing her to be there or him to be there and really coming back to that sense of of trust in the universal nature of divine and Taurus is very much about that. It wants to simplify and have a peaceful existence to coexist with love and, and also just about, you know, relating and worthiness and working on our own worth and strength and what we're able to receive. I mean, I think all of us doing this will help to heal on a bigger picture level. And of Absolutely. course, there's collective things we can do, but I think it has to start with each mm. one of us. What you're sharing, and, yeah, yeah. What you're sharing mm. remind, reminds me of um, something a friend shared with me the other day. Uh, she had been up northern New South Wales, and mm -hmm. she was she was showing me some beautiful video footage and and some uh, photos of experiences mm -hmm. that she'd had in nature and just the magnificence of this particular waterfall and I, I don't recall where it is or what its name is but um and just this powerhouse waterfall and then surrounded by the, you know the rocks and the trees and I just I literally gasped when when I saw it and and I just was like, and I, and I said to her, wow, now that's life. Yeah, that's Beautiful. life. And all the stuff and the noise at that moment, irrelevant. And getting in touch with that life energy is really the gift that the, uh, the North Node in Taurus and, and Uranus and Taurus are, are bringing to us this year. And that connects us with our heart, you know. Mm, absolutely. And, 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 then absolutely. With, and then with that, with this Jupiter and Neptune conjunction, connecting with our heart connects us with our faith and our deeper belief that there is more absolutely. to this than meets the eye. Absolutely. Mm. And, you know, we have, you know, this is an 18 and a half year cycle. The nodes, transiting nodes take 18 and a half years, you know, to do a transit. So, and then they're in the signs for about a year and a half. 
So it's going to, and, and as I said later this year, that North Node is going to conjoin Uranus and Mars, which is going to be a whole nother piece of the puzzle or the picture. Um, I just actually happen to have that little book next to me and I just opened it up at the tree. And I just like, it's. I'm not going to read all of it, obviously, but I'm going to read the last sentence, mm. which I feel is sort of fitting for everything we've talked about. It says, mm -hmm. believe that you have the strength to deal with whatever is put in your path. The tree offers you feelings of unity. It is a symbol of trust. It also is here to tell you that you can always have a fresh start. Oh. What a lovely, the lovely cards, but That's just sort beautiful. Of felt right. And you know, that leads me to the thought of the last two years where the predominant feeling that has been permeating is fear and fear, mm. discon fear disconnects us from our heart yeah. and it takes effort to turn the thinking around and like what that that um, that quote was just saying you know it's it's stepping in and this is what faith is this is the, the belief in the unseen you know I have what it takes to get through this I am through this. I am strong. And it's 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 re-talking to ourselves. And that's that collective responsibility, like you were sharing, like, yeah, great mm -hmm. collectively, but with each of us showing up, you know, and, and my listeners know my core fundamental message is you as an individual are more powerful beyond measure. And that begins with, mm -hmm. you know, your the coherence with your mind and your heart. And yeah. that then sets up that energy vibration, you know, and then when in nature, we automatically go into that energy vibration. So there's, there's so much to mm, really taking your shoes off, getting yourself out, you know, um, breathing in. And, and like you were saying too, Lisa, you know, um, we've moved from that very yang nodal energy, yang being that masculine principle of taking charge and direction. And now we're moving into the, the yin, which is the feminine, the receptivity. Like where I live, I have a beautiful, most exquisite magnolia tree just outside my, um, my balcony. And I make sure every day I sit and it's just literally right outside right there Beautiful. and you know and it and the magnolia flowers bloom and you can smell the scent and then you've got you know cockatoos and different birds it's exquisite but just that sitting in and reminding myself breathe in drink in the gift that nature has on offer and nature is there for us to receive oh. and and this is the thing with this uranus and taurus the north node and taurus receive receive that feminine principle receive that life force you know because we're all very good Absolutely. being in our heads running around i'm so scared i'm this i'm that it's like but if you get your feet on the ground in that taurine energy and you breathe in it puts mm. you in a completely different space absolutely it does no it does it's it's very healing mm. and just while i've been listening to what you what you were just sharing thinking about this north node energy on the yeah. 3rd of march uh -huh. we have a new moon now that might also be a lovely thing to talk about now because uh let me just i'm just trying to get the absolute exact time to tell uh to tell everybody just bear with me for one moment because i'm almost there okay so it is on the 3rd of March and it's the early hours of the morning. So we're talking about 5, 6 a.m. on the 3rd of March. We have a new moon in Pisces, which is going to be conjunct Jupiter and Neptune. <laughs> and at the same time, the rulers of the North Node are conjunct. So we have Venus and Pluto and Mars all at 27 degrees. Yes. At the moment that we have a new moon in Pisces conjunct oh. Jupiter. Wow. That is, that. now that I would really love because that's massive. And, and just for everyone, you know, I hate 
talking just astrological jargon because if someone goes, well, what the hell does that mean, Venus, mm. Mars, Pluto? Yeah. Um, I'd really love to perhaps dive into that in mm -hmm. plain English because Go for it. that is going to be, well, maybe that's probably going to take too long now mm -hmm. because, but at the time of that new moon, we could do it and talk about yeah. the new moon. Let, let's get you back then and we'll talk about it. Because that's going to be very potent for anyone that hasn't worked with the new moon. It's a really, truly amazing type thing to do, you know, and they really work. And those that do will certainly, you know, say yes, they do because they're, it's an amazing time. And that's that's a big energy based on everything. We've just really been talking about Pisces, Jupiter and the nodes, all of that energy coming together. So maybe so, that's... So in wrapping up today's mm -hmm. chat, what mm -hmm. is, what practical, given that we've got the Taurus practicality, just a few, like we did in the last podcast, just a couple of practical tips. Mm. And, you know, and, and I, I know we talked about this before we got onto the podcast, Lisa, we were talking about like there is a general, we both agreed there is a general vibration at the moment of weariness, even, and it's the start of a new year. It, people in that, more, is it going to be more of the same? Uh, I don't know mm. how much longer I can keep going with this the way that it is any practical tips around yeah those those yeah, vibrations and those thoughts that could help our listeners today yeah um yes what a good question um well, I guess if we think about the north node um in Taurus and Jupiter in Pisces um and certainly coming back to nature is definitely a big one. But I'd probably say what, what is it that's actually really important to you? So I would say looking at your values. What are your values? I mean, we say the word values all the time, but actually to sit and, and create some space to really examine what are your values. And what do you value? And where, yes, what do, what what are do they? you what value? Do you value? Where have they come from? Are they your values? Are they yes. parental values? Uh, you know, how are they changing? You know, so what what is really important to you? Mm. Because it's what's important to us is where we want to put our energy. Mm. Um, so I would say certainly looking at our values and getting very, you know, allowing the space and the time to really sit with that mm. and and explore it i think is is super important at the moment um you know what we said about having you know spirituality you know if you're someone that's on a spiritual journey already to continue to explore and perhaps challenge yourself or you know, explore uncharted territory or, you know, maybe, you know, grab a book that you've not read and, and, and just try new things. And for those that maybe, I'm sure most people, if they're listening to this, are on a spiritual journey, but perhaps if there's something you've been interested in and never had the time, you know, maybe you're interested in knowing more about Buddhist principles, mm. you know, do some Googling, grab a book, look at, at you know, just exploring new territory mm. don't underestimate the power of you that's oh. with jupiter that's really you know don't and underestimate yourself um and boundaries that's probably the other one you know i mean you could say that at any time <laughs> boundaries are important which they are but i'm going to say particularly now and over the coming months be clear about your boundaries. Don't second guess yourself. Don't negate your intuition. Trust if something is telling you something, even if you have absolutely no rational reason to believe it or everyone's saying, well, what would you think that for? Trust yourself, your intuition. Have good boundaries to look after your own needs whilst yeah. examining values and and you know, giving yourself that space to explore and don't underestimate yourself. And and also, listeners, 
when one sets you know boundaries is a whole nother another podcast or five but in in keeping it <laughs> keeping it in simple terms you can get really clear really quickly about what your boundaries are when you're aware of what it is that you value because when you know what you value it's like look at a boundary like it is a a cell in your body now cells have semi-permeable membranes and what does that mean it's selective about what it lets in and what it lets out now boundaries are not uh, walls to your heart or walls to keep people out it's what am I willing to let in and what am I willing to let go of and you see the beauty with the nodal axis is uh, in Taurus and Scorpio is that they're, they're signs that are fixed signs so it does on the one hand give us that ability to be more uh, strong in our boundaries it's also really important to be mindful that there still needs to be a certain amount of semi-permeability what you're going to let in and what you're going to let out and you'll know you'll know that and it'll come from a more empowered place when you know what it is that you value mm, absolutely mm. very nicely said yeah be mindful of the intention behind everything as well perfect that's perfect that's probably a good lisa intention. thank you so much yet again for your amazing uh insights your soulful interpretations your just your beauty as a soul being here on the planet gifting us with your time and your expertise about oh. astrology which you evolutionary astrology which it's so evident you know you put your heart and soul into it and and I just can't thank you enough and really mm. look forward to getting you back it'd be great to talk about the 3rd of March um and we'll you know we'll get you back every every few months I know you said you're keen to do that because um, mm, I know to. that you've you've got so much wisdom and beauty to share and listeners also Lisa uh has a, a gorgeous um offering to the world where she does amazing astrology um tours globally and that's something that's coming up for her she's going to be running um one of those in May, is it May, Lisa? One in May, yep, May, September, and again next May, 23. Wow. So May and, 22, yeah. September, and then May, yes. And so we've, we'll place in the link below um, Lisa's website with all her details and dates and what her amazing European and global tours hold. And uh, yeah, and if you need to get in contact with her, her details will be listed. And if you need to contact me, if you're interested in having a natal birth chart reading, or you want some information, or you want some information and um, to book in for a transit or progressions reading, you can certainly contact myself. And you can also contact Lisa as well. She's a prolific and incredible astrologer. I can I can personally attest to that. So thank you so, kind. so much for your time. My pleasure. My pleasure. And, thank you for your time and, and we everyone's will, time. And we will touch base very, very soon. We will. Take care. Everyone take care. Bye.